So this is gonna be the probe that we'll be using to do an interscaling block and for a lot of the peripheral nerve blocks we'll be using. I wanna show you how to check uh, which side is left and which side is right. So first you need to put some of this lube on. Yeah. And so we'll just look over here on the ultrasound machine. If I put my finger and I push down, you see, there was an indentation on the right side. We know this is right and this is left. That's the first part of checking the probe. Okay, so Brittany's gonna try and find my brachial plexus. Uh, this is the home base position, which is when the probe is above the clavicle. And you wanna try and find the subclavian artery, which is this dark circle that's pulsating. And then to the right of it, these darker, smaller circles are um, kind of a bundle of grapes. These are the nerves. Um, so as she moves the probe kind of towards my head, you'll see the bundle of grapes kind of start to converge and our goal is to find a traffic light. So she found it pretty easily. There's one, two, three. It's a traffic light. And to the right and to the left of that is going to be the scaling muscles. And this right here is the sternocleidal mu uh, mastoid muscle. So typically where that ends, it'll be where you see the traffic light. Um, not all the time, but uh, in most people, that would be a good uh, anatomy kind of landmark. So this is the view that you want when you do interscaling block. So I don't know if you guys can see it, but this is on a cadaver. The brachial plexus is right here on the left, and then there's a needle, um, and it's going towards the brachial plexus. You see that line that, it's called hyperechoic when it's more uh, white on the ultrasound, because um, it's a solid, and typically more solid structures appear more white. So these, this is a really hard view to get when the needle can be in plane, which is the same, uh, is parallel to the probe. Because when you think about it, the probe, it just kind of sends out a scan that's about the size of like a credit card slice. Um, so she was able to really do a good view here to find the needle so that we can kind of advance towards the brachial plexus and then give local anesthetic that way. Ta-da! Hey you guys, so this is a view um, that you see for an axillary block. Um, Pearl is able to find it on me. So I'll basically tell you with the probe, uh, what you gotta do first is palpate the axillary artery, um, and then in the middle of the probe there's a line. You place that line right on the axillary artery. Um, you know how before we learned that left, um, the left of the probe, when you uh, kind of poke your finger on the probe, you find out which way is left, which way is right. The left side should be um, superior or at the top. So when you're looking at the screen, um, basically the left, this is the top, like the top of the arm, and then this will be the bottom of the arm. So just kind of orient yourself that way. Once you get this view, you'll see this is the axillary artery, which is pretty apparent when you see it's pulsating. Um, and based on the acronym I was telling you guys earlier about uh, RUMPIS, which I know is a weird acronym, but I promise it works, uh, you can basically find the nerves in relation to the axillary artery. So it might be a little bit hard to see, but a uh, radial nerve should be posterior, so it actually will be around here. Ulnar nerve should be inferior, so this would be kind of where the ulnar nerve is. And then both the muscular cutaneous and the median nerve should be superior or to the left of the axillary artery. So the median nerve would <coughs> typically be here, and then the muscular cutaneous will be actually around here. The best way to block it will be to probably go in this way. Um, then you have to get the radial nerve first, then the ulnar, the median um, together at the top then you basically uh, get the needle outward and then get the muscular cutaneous and block that too with the local anesthetic. So this is kind of how you do axillary nerve block. We're gonna be doing the rectus sheath block. And so um, Melissa is controlling the ultrasound and we're gonna find my rectus abdominis muscle. The placement's gonna be lateral to the belly button. Um, so the probe, as you can see, it's to the side of it. And we have a pretty good view here. Our goal is to find the rectus abdominis muscle, which is right here. And we see the anterior sheath and the posterior sheath. So typically, uh, when you do the block, you want the needle to actually be going um, underneath the rectus abdominis muscle, but above the posterior sheath. There'll be like a little thin layer. Um, what you can do is um, put in like one to two mils of like local anesthetic and then you should be able to see the tissue layers spread a little bit and make, making sure that you're in the right spot. But this is a really good block for like the umbilical surgeries, just anything by the belly button. So 
it'll cover like T9 to T11 dermatones and that's how you do it. Okay, so this is an ultrasound uh, image of the rectus abdominis muscle for on a cadaver. Um, as you can kind of see, um, this is going to be the hyperechoic or the, the wider part is going to be, that's the rectus abdominis muscle. And this line above it is the anterior sheath and this line underneath it is the posterior sheath. So I'm going to try my best to go from a medial uh, lateral approach and hopefully you guys will be able to see my needle. There's my needle. So you never advance the needle uh, unless you see the tip. And um, as you can see, there's like that super white uh, tip. Can you point to the tip? Yeah. Uh, we want to always know where that is. So as this advances, my goal is to get basically to the bottom of the muscle. Um, and to get basically to your, yeah. Okay. So my goal is to get to the bottom of the rectus abdominis muscle and above the posterior sheath. So this is going to be about where I inject. Um, yeah. Uh, normally, if we had normal saline, you can inject one or two mils, and that should expand the layers, and then you'll be able to uh, better visualize it. But that's kind of what it would look like with the with the needle. Woo. So this is the tap block, transversus abdominis plane block. So right now I have the probe between the iliac crest and the uh, margin of the subcostal. And you're looking for kind of a, a um, in line with the belly button on the side, mid axillary. And then you look at here and you see the external oblique, the internal oblique, and the transversus abdominis. So the tap block is going to inject into the sheath between the internal oblique and the transversus abdominis. Very nice, look at that perfect anatomy. Yeah. Find where we would do an adductor canal or a saphenous block on me. Um, so you can see there are some landmarks on the ultrasound machine. There's the... So here's the um, femoral artery. And then you have the femoral vein, which is compressible. Mm -hmm. There's mm. the right next to the artery and above the vein is the saphenous nerve. It's the hyperechoic area. And then we use uh, landmarks such as muscles to identify where those are. So here's the sartorius muscle. It's this boat-shaped muscle that's hyperechoic. And then off to the um, medial or no lateral side, you have the vastus medialis muscle. It's a little hypoechoic. And then medial. Um, you have the adductor longus muscle, and they make up the adductor canal. So your needle is going to come down uh, on top of the muscles or between the muscles and inject um, right next to the nerve and then hydrodissect it, and then you'll go under and inject more local anesthetic. Hello guys, for the sake of learning, we're also looking at my femoral, <laughs> my femoral artery area. So I'm currently using the probe to look and somebody can kind of point out landmarks for me while I record. So this pulsating hypoechoic structure is the femoral artery. Um, we have the compressible vein right next to it. And then you're going to have this big hypoechoic muscle is your iliopsoas muscle. Um, you have your um, femur down here is the hyperechoic hyper structure. And then you have um, this line that's hyperechoic going on the top, that's the uh, fascia lata. And then you have this line that goes um, under the artery right here, and that's the fascia iliaca. And then your nerve is right there um, below the fascia iliaca, right next to the femoral artery. 